I finish talking as well, I'll put my slides into the chat box. So if there's any links that you want to follow up, any Q QR codes that you didn't catch, I'll post the slides into the chat function so you can have a look at those afterwards as well. So hi everyone, and um, thanks so much um, to Charlotte and the Society for inviting me along today. It's really great to see people across all different year groups. Um, so hopefully you'll find a lot of content from today's session useful. Um, I'm here to talk to you a little bit about career options with your degree, some of which I'm sure you're already well aware of, um, but just to maybe bust some myths, give you some more ideas of things that you could do, um, and then just tell you a little bit about everything that the Career Service has to offer that's coming up this semester. We've got a jam-packed schedule and lots of new um, and innovative tools for you to use to help you apply for work experience, internships, graduate jobs. So just to get started, um, you may be aware um, that you can do almost anything um, with a social anthropology degree. Some of you might be on the call from other humanities disciplines, maybe you've just got an interest in anthropology. This is true for any degree subject. So 70% of all graduate jobs are open to you for your degree, which means that you know, you've got loads to choose from, which is fantastic, but also can be a little bit overwhelming when it's starting to think about how do I you know make a choice how do I narrow that down and that's what you know career support is here to help you do you can have one-to-one -one appointments where we can go through you know and um, what you're looking for specifically and how to get there so do come and use that one-to-one -one service at any time throughout your degree and um, from your first year all the way through to postgraduate study so hopefully you know you're enjoying your course I know it's you know not quite the same as we might have liked in, in a normal year and um, but hopefully you're developing lots of additional new skills like digital skills communicating um, in this digital space and um, which is a real positive that you can take from this experience as well. Okay so what could you do with your degree? So we link a lot of the career service to a website called prospects.ac.uk. Again I've just put up an anthropology as the example but you can look at what can I do with my degree and you can choose any degree and this is just to give you some ideas. So prospects will pull out some things that typically people might do with an anthropology degree. Give you jobs directly related to your degree but also a range of other jobs where your degree might be useful and each of these profiles will take you through okay so it says market researcher but what does that mean what would I do in a role as a market researcher what are the responsibilities what are the skills that I need what are the what's the potential salary in that particular opportunity so prospects is a really really good website if you're just starting to explore what opportunities might be open to you with your degree however you're absolutely not limited to just those things that I put up on the screen as I say you can do almost anything and we've got lots and lots of events at the career service throughout this semester that will give you insight into many of these sectors and if you missed any of the semester one events you can find them on the careers youtube channel which I'll point to a bit later on in the session Something else that's really, really useful if you don't have it already is LinkedIn. Um, networking is becoming more and more important part in job hunting, but also career inspiration. So if you go onto LinkedIn, type in University of Manchester into the search bar, you'll be able to see this alumni search tool. And this is everybody that's on LinkedIn that studied at Manchester and as the example for today obviously I've picked anthropology as the example you can see then live data everybody from that course what kind of career areas are they working in so we can see here media and comms education business development social services and community work are very popular with this course and then you can have a little nosy at everybody's profiles that works in particular sectors that you might be interested in to see you know how did they get that really cool job at the civil service you know what internships did they have what kind of first steps did they take in the industry and that's what we really encourage you in the career service to, to be curious to explore to have a little look around be a bit nosy uh, and you'll find out some really interesting career paths that you probably never even heard of some of you especially those of you that are graduating your final year this year or potentially you're finishing your postgraduate course you may well be concerned about the labor market at the moment and i just really want to reassure you that it is not all doom and gloom and um, you might see really negative things on the media about the state of the job market um, but things are bouncing back and um, we anticipate that things oh so if someone's just joined the call can you put yourself on mute please thank you um, 
Although the graduate labour market is unlikely to bounce right back to pre-pandemic levels, 2021 is definitely looking better than 2020 um, for graduating cohorts. And vacancies are running at roughly 70% of what they were last time for graduates. So the market is not actually as bad for graduates as it is overall. And there's some data here from actually just December to show um, that there are some increases in certain geographical areas across the UK. And we've got 800 live jobs, well, that was of a few weeks ago on our university jobs board. So there's really plenty of things out there. If you're worried at all about, you know, what kind of opportunities there are, do come and have a one-to-one -one conversation with us at the Career Service. Okay, so just to tell you a little bit about how you can access us, if any of that sounds interesting, you want to find out more. Um, this was launched last week. It's called Career Connect and it replaces Careers Link, which you may well have used previously to find vacancies. Um, now, the best thing about Career Connect is you can book your own appointments, you can cancel your own appointments, you can tell us what you want to talk about, you're welcome to book an appointment with me or with any of the careers consultants that offer a humanities careers appointment, we, we work um, across the whole faculty, so you can pick an appointment that suits you, um, those are half an hour guidance appointments. You can also find opportunities on here, so work experience placements and um, year in industries, job vacancies um, are on here um, and this is where you can also find all the events so I'm going to tell you a little bit about some of the events that are coming up in a bit um, but I'd really advise you to log on to Career Connect to book onto those if you're interested because some of them will have very limited um, spaces hopefully you know not as much as we are on campus because we're not as restricted but some events do require you know students to work in small groups and you can only have a certain number um, attending so if you are interested go and have a look at Career Connect if you haven't already you can also have appointments to look at CVs, covering letters, applications for jobs, personal statements for further study. And that's a service uh, that's delivered by our student partner interns. So they're fully trained and um, to give guidance on all aspects. We had great feedback on that service last semester. And um, I'll tell you a little bit more about booking a CV appointment in a moment, because that's a, another little change to what we offer. Accessing events. If you go to the Career Service website, um, and click on the events tab, uh, you'll find a list of everything we've got going on this semester. Some I can mention now, but there's loads <laughs> and you're all individuals. You'll all want slightly different things and find different things interesting. So I really encourage you to go and check out the, the list of everything that's available. Log on to Careers Connect to book some of those. Some of them that are a bit later in the year, they're not on Career Connect just yet because we've just launched it, but hopefully they'll all be up there soon. And I mentioned I've got our YouTube channel as well. So any events that happened last semester um, are all on here for you to watch and catch up on. So, you know, some of you I'm sure are interested in, in sectors like the charity sector, banking and finance. Um, all, we've got all the Meet the Professionals from last semester on there, which is where we have alumni um, talking about the different industries that they work in. We've got lots of different social media for you to kind of keep up to date with what's going on. Um, the, we did a takeover on the official University of Manchester Instagram yesterday, and that's now in their highlights section. So if you want quick access to career service stuff, it's there as well. Um, and this is where we just post different events, updates. The WordPress there on the bottom right is our blogs. And um, so you can have a read through um, different blogs as well. Uh, what's on? So just to give you um, a bit of a summary, throughout the next semester we're theming some of our um, different weeks. So coming up it's career planning and decision making. So if anything I've said has sparked a bit of interest in terms of okay what could I do with my degree and you know what different sectors are interested, how do I actually start to narrow that down, how do I start to make decisions. There's some sessions next week and one on career planning and decision making and then a specific session just for final year students as well. Then we've got building work experience uh, coming up in, later in February and March. Um, international, sorry, <laughs> if someone could just put themselves on mute, we can hear some background noise. Thank you. Okay. I think that's that's worked and um, we've got um sessions coming up on working internationally so if you're an international student or you're just interested in working internationally you can come along to events to hear about jobs all over the world not just in the uk and um, we'll have lots of sessions on recruitment skills so learning how to pass assessment centers interviews and um, networking sessions how to use linkedin so lots and lots of different things going on 
Um, a couple of things around getting experience as well. And I know this has been quite difficult for a lot of you maybe to get that extra work experience this um, year because of the pandemic. So make the most of the opportunities, especially you know, if you're in your final year, you want to get a little bit more experience. We are running some opportunities, for example, to do a session where on group work and presentations where you'll get set a task, you'll work in a small team to come up with some ideas and present that back. Um, so there are little things available that you can be doing to build your CV, even though some of those formal work experience programmes might not have been available. The same with things like the Meet the Professionals networking sessions where you'll meet alumni that work in different fields and industries, a great opportunity to make connections, potentially for future work experience and opportunities, um, and getting some insights into a range of different industries. So we've got events coming up on international development and insights into the charity sector, the teaching sector as I say they're all on the events page so have a look at which ones might appeal to you those kind of networking sessions you could put on your CV as well if this, you know if you if you're lacking a bit of experience you could show the recruiter all the different things that you did at university including being part of this society that will really help that employer see everything that you've been doing and to be proactive outside your course so just going through in year groups, because there are some specific things and um, that you might be interested in, depending on the year that you're in. We've got a specific first year insights conference on the 24th of March, and that's um, aimed to get you some insights into a range of different sectors. So you can choose different sector workshops to go to. Um, student experience internship program will be opening shortly and um, there's a session on this next Tuesday I think that's on Career Connect so if you're interested in applying for summer um, internships these are open to first and second years and um, you might want to go and have a look at uh, that information on Career Connect or on the website. Media Club, I'd put for first years, but this is really open to everyone. And um, this is events, if you're interested in the media, we've got a session coming up on publishing, we're doing an insight into the media industry. I know from, from courses similar to yours, this is a, an area of real interest. So a great opportunity to get some exposure to that particular industry. And then insights into different um, career areas that I've mentioned there. Second years, potentially, I don't know how many of you will have the opportunity to do study abroad, potentially that might be something you want to look into. I've mentioned student experience internships, and there's also the work experience bursary that you can apply for if you find an unpaid internship. The Career Service can support with um, travel and accommodation costs if you make an application to the workplace bursary scheme. Final years and postgrads. Again, I mean, a lot of this is cross-cutting. You can come to the different things, but really the practical things, so getting you ready for the interviews, the experience days, like I mentioned, perhaps in your group working, your presentations, getting ready for assessment centres, and um, might be you know, really helpful to you at this stage. There'll be a particular finalist conference as well that you'll um, see coming up later in the year. And then we do have separate sessions available for postgraduates um, about applying for jobs, interviews and assessment centres. So you can learn how to make the most of your master's qualifications in your applications and um, for jobs. So that's just a hint. As I say, there's lots more going on, um, but that's just to give you a flavour. Um, I know a lot of students are interested in staying in Manchester, so for those of you that are in your final year, if you're looking to stay in Manchester next year, I really recommend that you have a look at Manchester graduate talent. Um, often you see a kind of sigh of relief when people hear about MGT, um, because it's kind of like a nice safety net. So you might have um, seen already through your courses or your, your people that you work with in your school, um, Manchester graduate talent interns actually work across the university for 12 months after they graduate in a really wide range of different roles. So just for example, we've got four um, interns in the career service at the moment. These are fully paid graduate roles. One of them's working on our marketing and branding. One of them's working on our international work, running conferences and events. So you know these are really great roles that occur across the university that can help give you that first step um, into you know getting a, a paid graduate role so they're at the university but also across the greater Manchester area in lots of different small smaller companies so they're a really good way to get that first step on the graduate ladder especially if you're interested in staying in Manchester keep your eyes peeled for these and um, starting to be advertised um, a little later in the semester towards your um, graduation time. There's a Facebook group set up that will keep you up to date with every new vacancy that comes in, or you can find those opportunities on Career Connect. 
Okay, so what else can you do? That's a lot about you know what the career service can do for you, but what can you do for yourself as well, as well as coming along to events? We've got a new tool called Career Set, which you might have come across. Um, and this is where you can put your CV through um, an online automatic checker. So it runs through artificial intelligence and it'll help you um, give you a score out of 100. And it'll talk you through your CV line by line and show you exactly how to improve it. It's a very, very good resource. I put my own CV through it. I'm not ashamed to say that I got not a great score. <laughs> so it's um, something that everybody can work on. And um, if you want to book an appointment for somebody to review your CV, you now have to have achieved 70, uh, a score of 70 on the, on the CV checker first, and then you can come and have an appointment and um, to help you with tailoring that in particular. Any problems with it, if you're struggling to get to uh, 70 after three attempts, you can just get in touch with us and we'll help you out with that. Um, but the idea is there's lots and lots um, of, of fantastic results that will come out of this that will help you with your CD automatically. You can use this at any time, 24 seven. And so that's available for you to use and you can put it through over and over and over again until you um, get a score that you're happy with all the way up to 100. We've had students who've got 100 out of 100. So that's brand new last semester. Um, I'd recommend having a little look at that if you think your CV needs a bit of a refresh. We've also got a new resource called Shortlist Me. Um, so if you're coming across video interviews in the recruitment process and you've never experienced one before, then this is um, a, a resource that you can use through the university to practice. There's lots of different practice interviews on there from different companies, but we've also set some up ourselves. So there's a humanities one with kind of questions about humanities degrees, the value of your degree um, and, and the skills you might have gained from your degree that you can do to practice. So that's something else just to make you aware of. I'm sure you know you're here today as part of this society, which is fantastic. So you're already involved, um, but you might want to think about any other things that you could be doing, especially maybe if you're in your first year, your second year, if you do have a little bit more free time, potentially things like remote volunteering through the university's volunteer hub might be a really good way to start to get some experience. The Enterprise Centre as well, the Masood Enterprise Centre that runs out of the business school. If any of you are thinking about starting your own business, want to get more experience in that field, that would be a really good place to check in with. So that's essentially it. Um, Career Service website is kind of your one-stop shop to um, you know, find all the information that you need. And um, as I say, I've, that's just been updated. So Careers Link is now called Career Connect and you can log in there and book an appointment with myself or any of the other humanities careers consultants. If you want to talk more about your kind of career options and sign up for any of those events that I've mentioned. Um, there is a short little video, but I won't play that now because I want to make sure we've got time for questions. But as I say, I'll try and put these slides into the chat in a minute uh, when I stop sharing. But that's it. So I'll, I'll just stop sharing so I can see everyone. Um, is there any questions? You're welcome to unmute yourself or pop a question in the chat. I think, have we got about five minutes, Charlotte? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, we can take five or ten minutes for questions. Great. I can hear some background noise, but I don't think it's a question. Um, any questions? Anything that you were hoping that I'd cover that I didn't, that you want to find out about? Anything that I said that you want more information on? Uh, I want to ask how worried we should be about internships, <laughs> especially in terms of applying for masters. Like, do they look at how many internships or like in general, if we have any internships? So I think it depends how we're defining an internship. So an internship, you know, usually you would do them in your second year, summer, six to eight weeks, but they can be shorter. They can be shorter experiences. You might do a week over Easter, et cetera. Um, I think recruiters and universities for postgraduate study are definitely adjusting their expectations of what they um, 
expect to see you know they can't expect to ha for you all to have the same level of experience of somebody that, that would be graduating a year ago so they are adjusting their expectations and I would also say that quite often people can be um, you know they really want to get that internship that six to eight program on their CV but lots of people don't get an internship it's about what else you've done outside your degree that gives you that complete package so have you done any volunteering have you had a part-time job people very often dismiss these things as not important or not good enough that's absolutely not the case you know you could have had a part-time job in in a retail organization for three years and that can show amazing skills that a recruiter would be really lucky to have with um, any job or postgraduate program that you apply for it's also about motivation so you know are you really interested in that particular course that you're applying for at that university are you particularly interested in this company so yes the skills and the experience and background that you have are really important but also that's where people often go wrong is not doing enough research on the organizations or the universities that they're applying to. Um, but try and think about everything that you've done more holistically as well. Um, you know, I mentioned part-time jobs, volunteering. It might be that you caring for elderly relatives or, you know, that there's lots of things that you might be doing outside your degree that you think don't count, but they absolutely do. And as I've said, there's so much going on this semester, the career service side, the insight events, the get experience events. If you feel like you're lacking a few things, then that's a really good place to come along to. And um, one other thing that's just popped into my mind that I didn't mention, and um, I'll just put it in the chat. There is a link um, to virtual work experience on the career service website. So if you haven't seen this, they are more commercial, the organisations that have published these virtual internships. So if you're interested in things like um, finance, technology, the law, there's some environmental ones on there, I think. And um, then there's some online work experience that you can access for free on there. Um, but keep your eyes peeled for what's going on, because if you look on things like the Media Club Facebook group, there'll be online lectures and webinars and things that the BBC and ITV are doing. So you just need to be, be thinking about what's important for you in your career. And again, if you're not sure where to start with that, do come and have a chat to us. Okay, that thank you. Your question. That was a very long-winded answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that helped. Thank, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? Well, I have a question. Um, so, how we can like sell ourselves, like in through the CV, to a potential, you know, job? Because normally, when you apply for a job, they never like. Uh, wanting exactly someone from social anthropology and many times people just look at social anthropology and think what what is this you know and prefer to hire someone that is like have a more specific degree so yeah. how we can sell ourselves and I don't know show people that you know we can do it as well absolutely I think more and more employers are becoming more open to that especially some of the larger companies you know you can go and be you know, go and be um, an accountant with a music degree, or you can go and be a lawyer with a with an English degree. Like the, the the restrictions are kind of loosening a bit, maybe than they have been in the past. There are still a lot of recruiters, absolutely, that put job ad adverts out there and say, you know, would prefer a marketing degree, and you're like, I haven't got a marketing degree, but I'm really interested in it. I've got great work experience. So I understand there's some barriers there that the employers sometimes put in place. What I would say, just on that point where employers sometimes say preferred degree, um, you can ignore that just to a certain extent. You know, don't let an employer stop you just because it says, oh, we prefer a business degree or a marketing degree or particular. Actually, if you've got the relevant experience and the passion for it, then there's nothing to stop you applying for that role just because they prefer it doesn't mean they're not going to get brilliant candidates from other programmes. The second point is you need to think carefully about what skills you've developed from your degree. And um, when I come and talk to you guys during your lectures, so I came to talk to the final years in their dissertation module last semester about the skills they've learned from their degree. I'll be coming to speak to the second years later and um, around May time. Um, but this is something you can be doing independently as well. You know, what have you been learning from your course? What have you been learning from your degree? Not just the content, but the skills, the communication, the research. Um, because those are the skills that the employers are going to be interested in. Now, the way that you get to interview um, with your CV and application 
is that your if you think about a matching process so the app the job application says they've got 10 essential criteria these are the things that they might want in order for you to be successful at getting through to interview in your cv you need to match that so it doesn't matter what degree you had to, to a certain extent if they say we're looking for problem solvers team players innovative thinkers then in your cv you need to show some evidence of where you've achieved all of those things so as long as you feel like you've got the skills from your degree, from your extracurriculars, then you can sell that degree to the employer and show them that you match, that you have what they're looking for. So I just think a bit more about the skills, I suppose, answer to your question. That's where you're going to really um, bring to the forefront what you have. However, there might be, as we said, from if you were here at the beginning on prospects, it will show you um, where your degree might be more useful. Um, if you want to do something that's very social, for example, you want to go into social work or public policy or research, then obviously there might be some very more specific skills and content that you have to offer. Um, so it's a combination of those things, really, to show the employer what a brilliant candidate you are. And that's what we, we're here to do to help you. So, you know, bring that draft of that application form of that CV um, and get a second pair of eyes on it because... I've never seen anything that's perfect. There's always ways that we can improve it. And that's what we're here to do, to try and help you. Does that answer your question? Yeah, sure. And uh, the other question is like, once we graduate, I am a master's student, uh, we can still have access to that career service or no? Yeah, for two years. Yeah, you can access the career service for two years. <laughs> Everyone's like, oh my God, I didn't know that. <laughs> we, yeah, I should have said that earlier. We do tend to um, say that up front, but pe I've, I've just forgotten today. But yeah, you can. And so often we get people who maybe have got their first graduate job, but it's not quite right. And they kind of want to change. And that's when they could come back and have more appointments or they've got an interview coming up six months down the line. They want some help with that. You have a gap year, some time out. Absolutely, you're welcome to come back and use us for two years after graduation. And that's from an undergraduate or a postgraduate programme. Thank you. Okay, I'm conscious of the time. Have you guys got your next speaker arrived? Uh, she should be ready soon. She's just checking up her connection and everything. But if she's not able to speak, I can, uh, you know, whip something up uh, for her. <laughs> okay, any final questions then while we're waiting? I'm just gonna try and put the slides in the chat for you. Brilliant, and then Kim, I think, um, just on behalf of all of us, just wanted to iterate how um, grateful we are for you coming to speak to us today about any careers opportunities and stuff like that. It's been really informative. Thank you so much. No problem. Um, I'll just stay on the line for a few minutes while I try and um, put this um, document in the chat for you. If, it, if I can't get it to work, then perhaps I can email it to you guys and you can post it. Um, otherwise, thank you very much for having me. It's been really nice um, to, to speak to you all. Best of luck um, with whatever year you're in. You know, lots of opportunities available. So do make the most of them, you know, while you're, while you're still with us. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Okay, the next speaker is having a couple problems, but um, I'll just introduce for her and then if she's not able to come. I can tell you about her. Um, so basically, uh, there's this initiative called EduVenture, which was started by a couple of students. It's completely student led. Um, and they talk about careers with a social impact, which I thought, you know, social anthropology students, we're all about that. So um, I'm just going to put their website into the chat so you guys can have a look. Um, yeah, the Act of Anthropology Society have uh, decided to team up with uh, this initiative. Um, and we are planning on having about one event a month with them to discuss some different uh, career paths that all have, you know, a social impact. Um, and they've done a lot of stuff already. I think um, on their social media, they have a past, they have links to their past talks. They've had loads of speakers come on in loads of different careers, um, which is really great. I was not prepared for this. <laughs> so I'm going to try and go on their social media and see what they have that I can link you link you guys to. But um, they did some talks over summer that were really helpful. So I'm hoping that you guys can still access them now. Um, yeah, I feel really bad for Kim because we kind of have extra time now. But thank you to her. Uh, what a legend. So um, yeah. <laughs> 
I really spitballing here. I wasn't expecting to do this. Um, I guess we'll see if she can connect. I don't know. Um, but yeah, <laughs> there there were quite a few different talks. I went to one uh, about travel journalism and another one about working um, with uh, working in the uh, volunteer sector and all that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, honestly, I'm not sure that she's going to be able to connect. So we might have to do a rain check on this part. But you have the website. Um, they're on Instagram. I believe they're on Facebook and stuff as well. So just check them out if you get a chance to. Um, I'm going to look and see if they have their past talks up on YouTube or anything. Um, but did not do research before. My bad. Sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, give me a second. Thanks for improvising, Abby. <laughs> we have events coming up with them um, once a month. So if this one doesn't go ahead, then um, I'm sure she'll, someone will be available at some stage. Yeah, I was also about to use this opportunity to shamelessly plug any of our other events for the Anthropology Society. If you guys are interested, we'll be running, um, I think we're planning on doing monthly sessions of armchair anthropology talks with professors that we've all been taught by. Um, and we'll be posting them regularly on our social media and emailing people. So if you wanna get involved in that sort of thing, please feel free to join. Um, we'd love to see you all there, see more faces around. Um, and also just checking most people can download the PDF that Kim sent, I was able to, so I hope that everyone else can. Um, and then, yeah, like Abby was saying, there's the um, link to the website for EduVenture if people want to give that a look while we're waiting for Isla. I think maybe give it another two or three minutes and if she can't connect. Um, if you go we'll onto, the web onto their website, into the events uh, part, they do have some events on there as well that they're hosting, uh, which hopefully you guys should be able to access to uh, just in case you're interested. It looks like she's been able to join. Um, hi everyone, apologies for both my tardiness and then my tech moment. That's all right. My laptop decided to restart and not want the sound to work, I'm so sorry. Um, hi everyone, Abby, do I just introduce myself? We've been talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> How much have I missed? She, she's the co-founder of EduVenture. Um, yeah. We're all very excited to be talking about careers with a social impact. So just go go ahead. Okay, great. So um, I founded EduVenture with um, a few partners that I actually met in China in 2019 when I did an internship with them, which is GoToCo, which is a really, really cool opportunity if you guys um, are interested in interning abroad. Um, and yeah, we just really, really wanted to connect more students with slightly more unusual career opportunities because not everyone wants a nine to five and not everyone wants to go into more of a corporate career. And there are so many young companies at the moment, especially with focuses like sustainability, um, that sometimes it's slightly harder to find opportunities within them because they're not on like mainstream job websites and they're not as big on LinkedIn. Um, so we are partnering with lots of different universities and different small companies that have positive impact, be it the humanitarian goals, sustainability goals, that kind of thing, to try to connect, I guess, the next top young professional generation with those opportunities. So we ran um, a series of webinars over last summer, which looked at a lot of different opportunities. I think we had um, NGOs, we had some amazing um, CEOs and CEO advisors of different NGOs, which was really, really cool. Um, we looked at different mindful and like mindset careers and how you can get involved in industries to do with mental health. Um, we had lots of different small businesses. We had a focus on sustainability businesses and growth within the UK. Um, so we looked at like Zero Waste London and some of the new sustainability events companies, which um, will I guess be picking up a bit more after pandemic and they do all of the event planning and like big fair planning and stuff for businesses focused on achieving sustainable uh, product delivery so that was really really amazing and if you guys are interested in watching any of the talks from the summer they're all on the EduVenture YouTube channel um, and at the end I know Abby uh, your whole setup is to do some questions so I'll send some links in 
the end so I'm not taking up too much more time uh, with the like the YouTube channel and the website and then we have Edu Venture Society set up across lots of different universities um, I think at the moment we have eight which I think it's coming up to ten so we have like a Bristol one there's ones at Oxford and Cambridge um, I run the University of Exeter Edu Venture Society um, and all of the different so, um, different societies at different universities then run their own events and speakers that we help partner them with and then a lot of those events are also open to any edgy venture members around the UK um, and sometimes they're open to non-society members as well because there isn't currently a society at Manchester so if any of you guys are interested in setting one up or know anyone who might be interested let me know I'll be there to talk you through it um, and we do offer like full support with society delivery we just find that it is easier to access students from specific universities when it comes to events because you guys know what you want and every university is slightly different in terms of distribution of subjects and the focus of different careers and what your career service offers so we always find it's better to work directly with students so that we can really offer you the events and the connections that you want rather than again the classic this is what we think you should do not necessarily what we want you want to do um, I think that's the majority of it. Oh, the only other thing is we are looking at delivering a lot more workshops over the next few months. So we really want to offer workshops that offer skills that are a bit different rather than the standard, this is what your LinkedIn profile should look like to appeal to a corporate conglomerate. Um, so definitely if you follow our Instagram or our LinkedIn page with a LinkedIn page, which again is a classic employability site, but they've got some different opportunities on there. That's another space. Um, to check out for like unusual internships, great books, recommended content from some of our speakers. Um, but yeah, I think that's everything. Who do I hand over to? I'm gonna hand over to Abby because <laughs> you invited me here. Yeah, that's fine. Um, does anybody have any questions about EduVenture or any of the things that they've done? Um, any of the stuff that they're working on? Uh, if not, if you do want to set up a society, we're kind of working with them as part of the Act Active Anthropology Society. But if anybody is interested in setting up a society or anything like that or getting more involved, uh, yeah, contact the Edu Venture Instagram or just talk to one of us in the Active Anthropology Society and, you know, we can sort that out uh, for you. Um, yeah, I think last thing for Edu Venture is just all the links to the website and the, the past talks and yeah, getting involved in the future, if any of you would like to do so. Um, yeah, I mean, if, if Abby, if you wouldn't mind me asking a question, I would be very interested um, as to what kind of roles and careers you guys are interested in, if there's anything that you are interested in that is less corporate that you've struggled to make headway with, because that's what we're here for. Um, and we are trying to keep designing events that appeal to different career um, like subject areas at university so if there's anything that you guys think like oh that looks so cool but I have no idea how that happens and you know we're talking like it can be a career that you know is not an entry-level job that you would take you 10 years to get there um, that's we you know we do try and pair speakers that are older that can talk you through their entire career route so if anyone has any any questions or any suggestions in that area that would be really interesting Um, I think personally, um, spaces like the UN's internship program, for instance, um, specific like routes into that and how to make yourself stand out and um, yeah, how to make yourself um, the most <laughs> valuable applicant, if you know what I mean, and things like, like that sort of specific internship route would be really interesting. Yeah, we did um, one of the talks from summer, if you check on YouTube, um, was focused on the NGO Alpenglow, which was founded and run by Angus Mercer. Actually, I'll see if I can find it. Um, who's absolutely amazing. And he went down more of a political route, but he did, I think, some work with the UN and the British government because he initially, I think, did, I want to say, kind of like admin and speech writing, kind of policy writing. Um, but he actually, I believe he has a law degree. So there's, there's a lot of the speakers that we've had have really gone down 
very curved routes. Most of the speakers we have, you know, they didn't do a degree which was like, oh, that's your that's your career. You need that. You need that degree to finish your career. The majority of the people we've interviewed have really talked to us about how all the different experiences and networks and connections that they made, especially when it came to doing work abroad, um, really, really changed their path because it allowed them to just meet the right person at the right time um, and segue into something completely different. So that would be probably a good one to check out in terms of that. Um, but I've made a note of it. It's definitely something that we can, we can look to offer. I think what I got from a lot of the talks in the summer was about the importance of networking. And I think also at the moment that is made a little more difficult, obviously, because it's, it's harder to get to people and to events and everything. So I think, yeah, something about the importance of networking and especially virtual networking would be something really interesting to explore, kind of the best way for people to do that at the moment. Mm, I mean, so this is this is in very, very early stages but we do have plans for some much bigger projects towards the end of the kind of university academic year where we're really hoping to connect like every single student who was interested in EduVenture across the UK on one platform, one space to offer like a range of different talks and then a range of different like discussion areas, sort of social areas, um, group chats, all of that kind of stuff where you guys can sort of pick like your top interests and then we can match you with other students who are being proactive, who really want to go into those areas, because there's so many students you don't realize have, you know, done an experience that you could do, but you don't know exists, or, you know, have like a great book recommendation, or know the right person for you to get into an area that maybe they're no longer as interested in. Um, so I, yeah, just don't underestimate, I guess, other young professionals networking possibilities. And that's where having more sort of cross university eduventure society events gets really exciting because meeting different society committees is just so everyone's got different skills you know everyone's like got different side projects going on so many people are running amazing charity campaigns or they've started new business while at university um and meeting those people really inspires you to try and do a similar thing because they're there to talk you through how they started their business or how they built the campaign from scratch yeah, that sounds really exciting. Um, I think just the link to your YouTube channel would be really useful. And then uh, if we don't have any questions, I don't know what you guys want to do. Um, sorry, I'm just finding it. If anyone's interested additionally in um, the internship that I went on with GoToCo, which resulted in the formation of EduVenture, which is where I've actually met the majority of now a lot of the EduVenture members. Um, I'm very happy to talk a little bit about that. Yes, please, that would be great. Okay, so GoToCo offer two week to three month internship placements in China. So you can choose to go for two weeks up to three months, it's very much your choice. I went for almost three months. I tried to maximize it because you know, everyone loves a holiday. I love a holiday as much as anyone. Um, and it was just absolutely amazing. Your TEFL, which is your teaching English as a foreign language certification is fully included and paid for, which is really exciting because it's expensive to do here. Um, and it's a really good experience to have on your CV, you know, for like international communication skills, leadership, all of that sort of thing. It's very good for if you want to go into teaching or you want to segue into an educational route, you know, even if it's more in a business sense. Um, and they cover like your food, your accommodation, they cover all of your support, your visa application support. They also offer a free five day holiday at the end where they place you in some hostels they have deals with in Yangshuo, which is like a really, really beautiful mountainous rural kind of tourist area of China where you just go like kayaking and do adventure activities for a week and just meet loads of other students which is I mean who doesn't want that <laughs> it's great um but I think the best part of their program is it's very accessible because you don't have to pay for your flights you can enter their ambassador program which is where you support them in like advertising to promotion you get your flights covered so all in all you can do the entire trip for the cost of your visa and then just really whatever like food shopping kind of thing you want to do, but your food's generally covered. So absolute minimum, you could probably do the entire trip on about 200 pounds, which, you know, as a three month placement in China is absolutely crazy to me because 
I've never found trips that are that affordable or internships that are that affordable. Um, but they write you professional references. They're there to support you with like career choices afterwards. They're really, really amazing with networking. Um, Richard, who really works well with me alongside EduVenture, who's another founder, um, is a director of GoToCo. And he did a talk in summer a bit more about GoToCo and more focused on how to build and uh, a business from scratch abroad, which is definitely something to look at if anyone's interested in just taking the plunge <laughs> moving abroad when they graduate and building a business. Um, but the networking opportunities I've had, like I have connections now with top students in like Singapore, Philippines, Russia, Portugal, all over the world, who, you know, sent me opportunities, spoke to me about different things I get involved with, offered for me to come stay with them. It's just amazing. So that's another really, really great opportunity if anyone wants to do that. Great, thank you. Um, I think, yeah, the link to your YouTube channel and then also the link to GoToCo would be really useful if that's okay. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Does anyone have any questions? Any more questions about Adventure, GoToCo, anything? Uh, you could put them in the chat. might be a no <laughs> um. it might be everything but either um yeah like like I said with Kim just wanted to thank you so much for your time and sharing all of your tips and tricks with us and I'm sure that you'll have a lot of people in contact with you now <laughs> asking about joining and um yeah on behalf of everyone just wanted to thank you for talking to us well, thank you for having me. I'm so sorry I was late. You know, your day is just not going quite going <laughs> as smoothly as you need it to. Oh, it's no problem. Yeah. Abby did a great job of, um, yeah, <laughs> improvising. So it's all good. Thank you so much again. Yeah, thank you everyone for coming. And we hope to see you at the next event. Um, yeah, and then um, found it informative. And feel free to ask any questions or email um the speakers or go on their pages you know um feel free to get in contact with them or us at any time thanks everyone have a good afternoon <laughs> you guys too bye thank you